Hey everyone, today we're gonna to take a look at how you can set up OpenVPN on PFSense. So there are two things that I wanna mention before we get started. And the first is that I have written instructions for all of this in the description of the video. And the second is that this will be the point of view from a home user. So I know that PFSense is used in a lot of business environments. This video tutorial will mostly look at it from the point of view of a home user. So that doesn't mean that it wouldn't work in a business environment, just that it's kind of tailored to the home user. So please keep that in mind as you're watching this. So one final disclaimer before we get started is that if you don't have a static external IP address, which means that your IP address never changes from your internet service provider, you will need to set up DDNS. DDNS stands for dynamic DNS and it tracks your external IP address. So if you are connecting to that domain name that you set up, you're ensuring that you're always connecting to your external IP address. I have a video if you own your own domain on how you can set it up using Cloudflare and I'll leave a pop-up for that now. However, if you just wanna set it up with a free provider, I have a written uh, tutorial that I set up and I will leave a link for that in the description which utilizes DuckDNS. It's just a totally free DDNS host name that you can set up and it's totally free. So that's the one disclaimer and now we're gonna get into the tutorial. So the first thing that you have to do is select VPN and then open VPN. From there, you can select wizards. And we're gonna be utilizing this to set up open VPN because it's just a straightforward way of doing this and it will ensure that everything is set up the way that it needs to be. So you can keep the type of server as local user access and you could select next. And this is one of those features earlier where I said we're looking at this from a home user's perspective. This will use local user access inside of PFSense. So at a later step, we're gonna to have to configure our users, which will then be able to uh, connect to our VPN server later on when we set it up. At the next step, you're gonna to have to create your own certificate authority. So you can select add new CA, and then you can give that certificate authority a name. You can populate in the location information if you'd like. I'm gonna be skipping that in this tutorial because it's just for test purposes. But then you can select next, and then at the next step, you can create a server certificate and you'll have to give that certificate a name as well, and you can populate in the location information if you would like. Finally, we're gonna move on to the next step, and it's going to ask you to give the OpenVPN server a description, so you can do that. You'll have to leave the interface as WAN, the protocol can be UDP on IPv4 only, and the local port will be 1194. So the one thing I wanna say about PFSense is there are a ton of settings, and you can really configure this a lot but there are also a lot of settings that you don't really have to touch. So we're gonna be skipping over a lot of them. That doesn't mean that you can't look a little further into them and customize it a little deeper if you'd like. However, for the generic OpenVPN setup, they're just not required. So all of the cryptographic settings can stay as default. We're gonna skip right over those. And in the tunnel settings, you have to ensure that you select a tunnel network that is not currently in use. So I'm gonna be using 192.168.200 and in this test environment, my local network is set up as 192.168.100. So you have to make sure that you're using something slightly obscure that you're definitely not gonna be using anywhere else. Now in that local network section, you have to enter in your LAN subnet. So this is gonna be the subnet that you want accessible when you connect to OpenVPN. So if you wanna be able to access your entire local network, you have to make sure that the entire subnet is here. So for that reason, I'm gonna be setting mine as 192.168.100 because that is my local network's subnet and I'll be able to connect to any device on that subnet. If you wanna change the concurrent connections, you can do that here. That's just the total number of people that are allowed to connect at any given time. And the last thing that you could take a look at is the DNS server. So if you want to use specific DNS servers, you can specify them here. Neither of those options are mandatory, so you can proceed whenever you're ready. And at the next step, you're gonna to have to make sure that you select both of these options here. And it's just gonna create a firewall rule and an open VPN rule. Um, and I'll show you that a little later after this is all configured, just show you the two rules that it creates. But these are the rules that are gonna ensure that you're able to connect to open VPN. So you can select next and then finished. And at this point, open VPN server is fully configured. Now you can't connect to it yet because we still have to set up the client settings. However, the server settings are fully set up. So there are two things that we have to do in order to proceed with the client settings. 
And the first is that you have to ensure that you install the OpenVPN-Client-Export package. You can get to that by selecting System, Package Manager, Available Packages, and then you can search for it there. This is just gonna allow us to quickly export our configuration file, which we'll be doing in a little bit. The second thing that you're gonna to have to do is you have to ensure that you have a user account set up with a user certificate created. So you can go to System, User Manager, Add. You can select the username, password, and the name, et cetera. And then at the bottom here, you're gonna see click to create a user certificate. From there, you can give the certificate a name. I normally just use the username plus uh, OpenVPN certificate, but you can set it as however you want. And you have to ensure that you use your OpenVPN certificate authority that we created earlier. So for me, that's OpenVPN underscore CA. The rest can stay as default and you could save this. Now you have to understand that for every single user that you want to utilize your VPN, you have to set up a user account for them and you have to create a certificate for them the same way that we just did. Now this is important because that certificate will exist in every configuration file that we go to export here in a second and everyone will have their own unique certificate. So you're gonna have to ensure you do that for every individual user. So now with the OpenVPN client export package installed and the uh, user account and certificates created, we can go through and export the configuration file. So in PFSense, you can select VPN and then open VPN, and then you can go to client export. Now there are a few things that you wanna specify here. And the first is the host name. So by default, it's going to have interface IP address, and that's gonna be your WAN's IP address. Now, if you have a static external IP address, that's fine, but the majority of home users will have a dynamic IP address assigned by their ISP. In that case, that's where you're gonna to have to set up DDNS. So if you did set up DDNS on PFSense here, you can go through and you're gonna be able to select it in the hostname resolution. You should see the exact name of your DDNS hostname. If you have DDNS set up somewhere else on a Raspberry Pi, or like a NAS or something like that, you can select other and then you can enter in the host name there. And this is gonna be used in the configuration file that we export in a minute. So after you save all of that, the rest of those settings can stay as default. And at the bottom, you're gonna see the exports that you can do. Now, if you're using something like Windows and you wanna just export the Windows installer, you can do that. However, I personally like to use the OpenVPN Connect configuration file. So when you select that, it's gonna export a configuration file. And I like this because it allows me to use the OpenVPN Connect application on Windows. Um, I'm a Windows user, but you can do the same on Mac. Um, however, it allows me to use the OpenVPN Connect application, which is just a newer version of it. And it also allows me to modify that configuration file. And I wanna quickly talk about full tunnel and split tunnel VPNs because it might be helpful for you to have two different configuration files configured for both full tunnel and split tunnel. Now I have a very basic example here, but in summary, a split tunnel VPN is only gonna route traffic over that is destined for your local network. So when I say that, I mean if you have a NAS on your network or a PC and you're trying to connect to it, it's only gonna route that traffic to that network. However, if you go to something like Google, it will completely bypass your home network and it's just gonna go straight there. So you can, in essence, keep this running 24 seven, and if you ever have to access anything on your home network, it will automatically go through that VPN tunnel. But if you try to access any of your other services or websites that you normally use, it will automatically use the network that you're currently connected to. Now a full tunnel VPN is totally different and it will route all of your traffic through your home network at all times. So if you use a, uh, a local device's IP address or you use something like Google, it's automatically going to connect to your house through that secure tunnel and then it will access that resource. So it might find the resource on the local network and it doesn't have to go any further or it might have to go one step further out to the internet to access whatever website you're trying to get to. Now the big takeaway here is that your external IP address on a split tunnel VPN will be whatever network you're currently connected to. However, on a full tunnel VPN, it will be wherever you have your OpenVPN server set up. So in this case, we're looking at this from a home user's perspective, it would have the external IP address of your home network. 
Now, this is important because if you're on an open network and you're just trying to secure your connection, you want to use a full tunnel VPN. A split tunnel VPN will route all of your traffic over that open network. And that's the main reason why I say that you might actually want to have two separate files. So what I normally do is I create a split tunnel VPN configuration file and I create a full tunnel VPN configuration file. And fortunately, it's very easy to set up a full tunnel VPN. So open up one of your configuration files that you just downloaded, and you're gonna add the line redirect-gateway-def1. When you add this to the top above the certificates, this will automatically route all of your traffic through your VPN tunnel. If you don't have this line, it's gonna be a split tunnel VPN. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, you can create two separate files, one for full tunnel, one for split tunnel, and you'll be able to connect to them depending on whatever the circumstance is. So now that you have these configuration files, you can go ahead and you can import them into whatever application you're using. So if you're using your mobile phone, for example, you can download the OpenVPN application, you can import that configuration file, and then you're gonna be able to connect to it and connect to the VPN. The key here is that you have to ensure that you're on a external network, meaning a network that's not currently hosting the VPN server. So a mobile phone is perfect for this because you can quickly transfer it to your phone, you can import the file, enter in your credentials, and then you're gonna be able to utilize your mobile phone's network. However, you can go through and you can set this up on a PC as well, you just have to make sure that that PC is on a different network. Now, I'm not gonna show you exactly what the process is. Right now, I'm just overlaying video from a different video that I did, which just shows you how to import the configuration file. At this point, it's relatively straightforward. You're really just importing the file in, entering in your credentials, ensuring that you're on an external network and connecting. Everything should connect. If you do have any issues, you should check on your PFSense firewall. So this is where I said a little earlier that we'll look at these firewall rules. So you wanna make sure that you have a WAN firewall rule allowing port 1194, and then you wanna go through and you wanna make sure that you have an open VPN firewall rule as well that's just allowing all traffic. So those are the first two and probably the easiest things you could check, but assuming that you entered in the correct information, the correct username and password, you're using the correct configuration file for that user, you should be able to access the VPN server from an outside network. So I'm hoping that this video helped you guys out. I tried to simplify it as much as I can. Like I said earlier, PFSense has tons and tons of different settings and you can configure them if you want, but you really don't have to. We just looked at some of the most important ones or at least the ones that I personally classify as the most important. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to help you guys out. Uh, but hopefully, like I said, this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. Thank you guys.